Record? Uh huh. Click there. And play. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. And greetings and salutations, everyone. You have tuned into Dr. Juti, WTF, here at UBN Radio Network. I am your host, Walt Lusk, and in studio is Dr. Judy Rosenberg, and we've got a really interesting show today. Um, we're going to be, uh, you know, Judy, I know we've talked about this for a while, but I've, I've really resented us uh, doing this show. And, I know. And, and so That's I need why some we're help. dedicating it to you. <laughs> 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 we're doing the show on resentment and narcissism. So there you go. We just hit both right there and nail on the head. <laughs> That's funny. And uh, if you can't want to catch other Don't shows. Don't mess with me, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all about you, Dr. It's all Judy. about me. <laughs> 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 and if you want to catch other shows we've done about me, I mean Dr. Judy, I mean narcissism, <laughs> you can catch us on Stitcher, iTunes, and of course now it's official, iHeartRadio. And we're thrilled to be part of the iHeartRadio family. Um, and of course you can watch us all, since we're such narcissists, on, on YouTube. <laughs> and while you're watching it, please subscribe. We appreciate all the subscribers. We get uh, more than uh, more off every day. And uh, so... <laughs> We're going to be dealing with resentment. We've talked about doing this for a while, and since we just finished grief, we thought we'd get into resentment, which I read a couple of articles. They're, they're kind of sort of related. Yeah, they kind of sort of so, are. Yeah. And and so here here's my deal with my narcissism, and I think everybody has some of it. And there's healthy narcissism, unhealthy narcissism, when you're demeaning, devaluing, and destroying other people. Oh, um, yeah, all the time. You know, if, if that's going on, that's that's pretty unhealthy. But in essence, my, my relationship with my own narcissism is... Is actually, I was really shy. I didn't really like to public speak at all or get up in front of a group or, you know, in yeah. front of a. You, you talked you know, about it in a previous of, show. Of people, that would have been ridiculous. So I, I see it this way as long as I get to talk about helping heal human disconnect and helping other people, I don't mind being in the spotlight for that. So that's the deal. And yes, there is a correlation between resentment and narcissism. Not always. I mean, not, not as such that just because you resent something, it doesn't make you a uh, narcissistic personality disorder. So we'll get into the nuances. And uh, as many of you know, I created a mind map system to look at this uh, structure of psychopathology in whatever form it takes. And the structure is based on wounds of childhood, wounds of childhood. And what, what does it take to form a healthy human psyche is in an ideal world, um, babies should be breastfed and have plenty of skin contact with mom and, and uh, uh, eye contact and uh, be attuned to and uh, be soothed which is a form of being, which is being attuned to. And uh, babies, in essence, need a world where they feel safe and protected, where they're number one and where they are the, uh, the center of attention and not mom or dad, and where mom and dad can um, support each other so that they can create a great system for the baby. That's in an ideal world. Well, yeah, eventually the baby has to leave mom and dad and go on their own. Eventually, yeah. but in order to have that healthy independence, you first have to have a healthy dependence. dependence. Yeah. And that's the way it flows. And so if the baby isn't verbally abused, sexually abused, physical, physically abused, if the baby isn't smothered, and if the baby isn't abandoned, then we pretty much have the ingredients for pretty good mental health. And you, you guys, this is a call-in show. It is, I was going to say. And uh, if you want to call in and get in the couch with Dr. Judy with your emotional ouch, especially if you resent picking up the phone and calling, then you want to call area code 323-843-2826. That's 323-843-2826. We also, you can write us an info at drjudywtf.com. 
If you have a question or you want some notes from the show or a song that we're going to shrink, which we're going to do later, we're going to try a rap song today. It should be interesting to see how this plays out. Right. The Dr. Judy will shrink that tune. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, call in, please. We w- welcome any and all calls and, uh, and your involvement. Uh, everybody always feels much better after they talk to Dr. Judy. I know I do. Thank you all. Sure. It's very, very kind. You know, talking about d- the resentment, uh, it's actually bitter indignation at having been treated unfairly. You know, uh, they, with some places talk about the fairness doctrine, and of course, life isn't really fair. And the feeling of displeasure or indignation of some act, remark, person, etc., regarding as, uh, regarded as causing some injury or insult. Um, I want to toss in that. Um, I think a lot of it, in some respects, has to do with expectations. It does, and just more on a foundational basis, I want to go through the mind map because I look at things through a particular lens, and I want to present that lens so that you can begin to think like a shrink, like I do, and that's one of the things that I teach people to do. Well, it's also in the back of your book, which you're a world-renowned author now, available on Amazon and paperback, and uh, Kendall, Healing Human Disconnect, be, be the cause, healing human disconnect, which is sort of the premise of our show. And those of you who are on, have iPhones, you can download the Psychological Healing Center app and get excerpts from the book, access to our shows, uh, forever growing blog, and, and others. So and, uh, and we have some amazing blogs that are going to be posted, yes. hopefully this week. Okay. Uh, my uh, wonderful psych assistant, Eric Perry, great is a um, great guy. Yeah, He's great. posting a bunch of blogs on porn. And uh, he does a lot of work with uh, with porn and helping men through uh, the addiction. And he, he posted some uh, amazing blogs on dating and getting dating ready, which is one of the things that uh, I created many yeah. years ago. As a matter of fact, for those of you interested in that particular uh, work that I, I do, you can go to getdatingready.com, getdatingready.com. It's an old site, but there's good information up there. So and I wanna, many, many moons ago, if you want to go, you can also check out our show, Getting Dating Ready, which we did a long time ago as well. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. forgot we all did. about that. Yeah, we okay. did. Uh, yeah, so, we covered it uh, all. Yes, <laughs> and, and now resentment too. <laughs> yes. And, and, and so um, just to lay out the foundation of how I think think and the system that I created for healing human disconnect, if you don't mind putting the mind map up there. And those of you that are listening to this or watching it on YouTube, you can see it. Uh, it's on drjudywtf.com. Thank you. So the top half of the mind map is how we encode, how we encode the fiber of our being and our self-esteem. The middle panel is how it causes chaos in our lives and Um, defense mechanisms and breakdowns. And at the end of that road, we have to paradigm shift and decode and recode out of all that stuff. So how does all of this damage come? How does resentment start? Well, it starts at cause, meaning our first few years of life, meaning the parents. Our parents are are the cause, and I didn't say fault or blame. They are the cause because they're our blueprint. They're our source of human connection or disconnection. And the way that we're treated by our parents is the way that we foundationally uh, blueprint um, our view about ourselves, our view about the world, um, how we resent things, how we re- appreciate things, and so on. So foundationally, if you didn't get all the emotional goodies in life, then on some level, it makes sense that you would resent that you didn't get those emotional goodies and that you're now struggling with emotional upheaval and that maybe you're not quite ahead of the uh, the, the game of life. And um, so... so that's how narcissism and resentment are are related. If you don't get the narcissistic supplies, the goodies of emotional uh, nurturance, then you don't have you're 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 have not in sense in a sense, and so it'll affect your life. And then playing it forward, uh, it s- sets up a series of resentment. Absolutely. Um, and one thing is, if you're re- if you're angry. Uh, bitter or have resentment, every moment that you experience those feelings is one less moment of happiness because they're pretty much mutually exclusive. If you're resenting somebody or if you're bitter at somebody, you can't be happy. 
and that robs you. And, in, and as we'll dive into, that really makes you powerless and a slave to those feelings. And I'm going back to how we look at this entire system. And what I'm saying about that is that if you're resenting other people, that's a form of projection onto them. Mm -hmm. of what your own um, hurts are about yourself and and what you experienced in in your first few years of life. So resentment is kind of like a projection. I resent that person. I'm really angry at what I didn't get at the causal level, but now I'm going to project that on you and resent you for it because, well, you're here and you're available and I can be bitterly angry at you without being angry at you. I can just bubble in resentment about you and nobody will really know about it but me but me right and eat right. me up i've got a little bit of a vignette here to, to give an example mm-hmm. and uh, it actually dovetails from our show last week on okay. grief okay. i've always been able to let things go however after my grandmother my best friend and longtime roommate passed away due to medical misdiagnosis i was consumed with resentment I had pleaded with a certain doctor for more tests, and I was repeatedly dismissed. The doctor made me feel stupid for even asking. Mm -hmm. The test would have saved my grandmother's life, so for me, the ultimate test of enduring this horrific ills of resentment came quite acutely, and in my case, his resentment wasn't a normal state of mind for me. So in other words, it just crept up on him. Mm -hmm. It, It did, however, turn to a crisis, cost me many nights of sleep, took away my appetite, left me with a feeling that nothing would be right until this doctor apologized or paid legally. I've since embarked on a long road of recovery from this experience. Obviously, resentment wasn't my only obstacle. Grief and guilt were huge as well. Mm -hmm. However, I couldn't properly grieve or address the fact that this was not my fault until I addressed the resentment. I'm still working on it and making progress every day. Yeah, in my practice, I notice that I come across a lot of people who sit with resentment, resentment that they're not good enough, um, resentment that started by parents messaging them that they're not good enough. Um, speaking of this particular um, article that you, you read, I'm, I'm thinking, if I'm to think like a shrink, which I am, <laughs> I'm thinking that uh, this particular person, perhaps if she had a higher sense of esteem, wouldn't have felt as powerless Okay, so what happens is when our parents demean, devalue, destroy, criticize us, they take away our power. And so when facing medical emergencies, when facing uh, crises, uh, that person might find that they have no voice to speak up. I remember... um, that when my father was ill and he he was dying of pancreatic cancer, it was really, really important that the family speak up on his behalf because there were times when he was out of it and he couldn't. So sometimes they gave him the wrong medication. Uh, but, But for people who struggle with a sense of powerlessness, it's hard, especially to confront a doctor and say, hey, doctor, so and so, um, I don't like the way you're uh, treating my grandmother. And I'd like to have a copy of those records. And I'd like to show those records to uh, another doctor and get a second opinion opinion here. So can you see how that resentment that ended up being projected on the doctor, not that the doctor uh, uh, was you know, was in, in the in the light or, or was doing anything helpful, but that, that that there was a core there that the person felt a sense of powerlessness and couldn't speak up. So I'm sure she was really, really angry at herself that she didn't um, take the power with, uh, uh, to, to get that second op- opinion. Well, and also at that point, there's the grief and maybe some guilt. Absolutely. Hey, you know, I could have done more. And obviously right. I've talked a lot about shitting on oneself, you know, and yes. I should have done this and should have done that. And of course, it's too late. Right. But this thing snowballs. And again, it does. instead, well, my, my, my whole thing in treatment is that I go back to the cause, back to the cause, so that it, instead of paying it forward in a bad way, I mean, uh, we clean out the past so it doesn't project into the future. Interesting enough, one article here is resentment is like holding onto hot coals. Hmm. And there's a Buddha saying, Holding on to anger is like gri- gripping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone. Only you're the one that gets burned. Always. Yeah. Right. 
Um, resentment is an extremely bitter diet and an extremely poisonous. I have no desire to make and take my own toxins. Um, it, you know, an important step in terms of getting over resentment, which we're going to address a little more in depth here, is acknowledge that what happened in the past cannot be undone. And what we can do is to build better lives for ourselves uh, in the past and in the future. It's, it's impossible to take that toothpaste and put it back in the tube. It There's is no impossible. no better way to hold on to... Uh, it is possible. It, no better way to hold on to bitter past than to relive uh, the horrible events that happened. All you're doing is, you know, reliving it over and over again, and that, that is just, that's so poisonous. But what is possible is we talk about this a lot, is instead of repressing the feelings and let it letting it boil into resentment, is to express, because whatever we don't express uh, and repress, that kind of stuff will turn into resentment and eventually it turns into depression and sense of, of, of real hopelessness and uh, then it affects our biochemistry as I know Walt has some information on and it's serious business because it, it, you know, mind, body, soul, what we don't express and we hold in and what we resent turns into really, really horrible biochemical and uh, reactions within the body and uh, the mind and body are deeply interconnected uh, phenomenally yeah yeah and as and as an article here holding on to resentment makes you powerless by holding on to resentment towards other people you are effectively shifting the blame onto somebody else but this stifles the healing process because when we make it someone else's job to provide us the love support and safety that we have to wait for and fix it this leaves us powerless so we're delegating it to somebody else when in fact ultimately it's our job and, and and sometimes we have to delegate to other people because in the case where we're sick and in the hospital we count on the doctor to do something and to do it well and when those things go wrong of course resentment will set in so just because you resent the doctor for um botching up the the you know the the surgery or the work on your, you know, your significant other or family member, it doesn't make you a narcissist, okay? So let's let's be perfectly clear about that. Uh, but what, what it does mean is that if you don't process those emotions, then you're the loser. At the end of the game, you're the loser because it's those coals that you were talking about. You, you know, you hold those coals and you, you're the ones that you're the one that gets the poison. Another way of putting it is, if if you're out there reliving it, you're dwelling on it and mm -hmm. retelling it. You're dwell and retell, hmm. and all you're doing is reliving it and expressing it to other people. And some feel, if you look at quantum physics, physics, which is of course a law of attraction, if you're doing that and you actually have a lot of emotion connected to it, you will eventually and probably really quickly attract that to you, which again is going to be make it worse. Yes, and, and this is not just on a law of attraction basis. This is psychological. This has um, other manifestations because psychologically, when you're in that place of resentment, well, why would people really want to gravitate toward you if your story told over and over again is your pain and suffering, pain and suffering? Nobody really wants to hear that. And so people shouldn't be surprised if people don't want to talk to them and call them and see how they're doing and invite them out. So um, one of the essential um, ways to get over resentment is what I love best is to tell the truth. The <laughs> truth will set you free. Absolutely, it will. So however you want to um, tell that truth, uh, it's essential that you first tell it to yourself. The truth is, I hate that doctor. The truth is, that doctor um, didn't do my grandmother any good. The truth is, is that I have legal recourse here. The truth is, um, I might want to use that legal recourse. The truth is, um, I might want to get a second opinion here. Okay, and that's where the power comes in, is when you tell the truth and you see what your options are, then you can start moving forward on those options. Or the truth may be, you know, the truth is, it is what it is. It didn't go well. I don't want to, um, I don't want to invite more pain into the situation. It's time to let it go. Whatever your truth is, 
but the resentment is is in a sense the opposite of the truth is it's because it's just stirring around the same theme and it's resolving nothing well yes that's what it says here it's it's the mental process of repeatedly replaying a feeling and the mm-hmm. events leading up to the the go, go gods or a, that angers us um we don't replay a cool illiterary of facts uh, we examine and relive in ways that affect us emotionally, physiologically, and spiritually in right. very, very destructive ways. So let's go back to cause and let's see how resentment plays out there. Okay. okay so we talk a lot about attachment theory and first few years of life. So baby grows up and uh, let's just bring in some what ifs. You know, what if mommy isn't around and mommy goes to work too soon and leaves the kid with a a uh, 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 child care provider and um, the child may resent the fact that she's not with her mom um, uh, on a regular basis. And so this 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 could be one form of resentment. If, if, if a, a, a child is growing up in an alcoholic home, the child may learn to resent the parents because they can't invite their friends over because the home is chaotic. If uh, if a child is growing up in a, a very impoverished home, the child may resent their parents because come uh, uh, Christmas or Hanukkah or birthdays or what have you, uh, there isn't a lot of money in that bank account to really um, make them feel special. And so that's the blueprint, and that's where the resentment comes in. And just because it is what it is, it doesn't mean that parents can't begin to talk to their children and say, look, little Johnny or Mary, the truth is, is we don't have a lot of money. And the truth is, we have a lot of love in the house. And the truth is, instead of toys, what we're going to do is we're going to do things together. So we're going to play a game on your birthday, or we're going to bake a cake together on your birthday, or we're going to just celebrate at home with uh, family and friends. So as parents, even if things are not ideal, even if you do have to work, or even if you don't have a lot of money, you could still turn to your child and say, the truth is, is that mommy has to go to work. Mommy loves you very much. Mommy will be home soon. As soon as I'm home, I'll have a chance to uh, play with you and read to you and tuck you in. And so I, I think that life is not ideal. And the best that we can do is to help our children understand that it's not their fault because they grow up thinking that all of this is their fault and then they resent it because children are very egocentric. I was just talking to, uh, I was doing supervision today and I was talking to my wonderful intern, uh, Jillian Sorkin, who really is, by the way, just a shout out to you, Jillian, you're doing an amazing job. Um, Everybody seems to love you and she's getting cards and thank yous and, um, it's just really, really nice for me to know that the mind map uh, therapy is replicable. And um, for those of you out there who are therapists and want to learn an amazing Absolutely. system, yes, uh, please be in touch with me, and I will be training other professionals into the system. Uh, and by the way, I am looking for a psychiatrist to join the psychological healing center. So. If there's anybody listening who's a psychiatrist who can um, come or, on board. Or if you even, know a psychiatrist. Yeah, even once a month and, yeah. and, uh, right. and work with the team so that we can offer that service uh, for people who really, really need to um, have that service, um, please be in touch. So um, with that said, uh, children always think that they are the cause they're egocentric. So if there's no money in the house, it's their fault. If mommy has to go to work, it's because they're not lovable. If daddy hits mommy, it's because they didn't stop daddy from hitting mommy. And that that is why um, it is so important to reprocess these feelings because if they're not reprocessed in adulthood, they turn into horrible symptoms and horrible core beliefs. And then they, they uh, blueprint uh, going forward really, really horrible uh, relationship patterns. And I think, again, it boils down to uh, control, right? I can't have somebody over mm-hmm. uh, and expectations. You know, mm-hmm. I really wanted them to come over and right. mom, dad. And, yeah, so right. it boils down. What I thought I would touch on here is uh, they've got uh, 13 examples of, of resentment. Um, mm-hmm. the, the moment that you start to resent somebody, you become their slave. They control your dreams, 
absorb your digestion, rob you of your peace of mind and goodwill, and take away the pleasure of your work. They ruin your religion and nullify your prayers. Mm. You cannot take a vacation without them going along. They destroy your freedom of mind and hound you wherever you go. There's no way to escape this person that you resent. He or she is with you when you're awake. They, re- they invade your privacy when you're asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're close beside you when you drive in your car or when you're on your job. You can never have uh, very effective happiness and influence is even sometimes in the tone of your voice. Mm-hmm. And a couple more. They require you to take medicine for indigestion, headaches, and loss of energy. And they even steal your lo- last moment of consciousness before you go to sleep. So if you want to be a slave, harbor your resentment. And they enter your dream material yep, as well. Absolutely, don't they? they do. Right. So you've, you've poisoned your mind, you've mm-hmm. poisoned your body. Mm-hmm. Uh, living with resentment is like taking poison and expecting the other guy to uh, get sick. Right. So well said. It's, uh, it's just, it, it, we've all done it, we've all experienced it. It's no picnic. We get to sort of dwell and retell over and over again. I mean, I'm as guilty as, as many, mm-hmm. and it's no picnic. And you just have to forgive yourself, and we're going to put uh, talk about ways to let go of resentment here in the latter half of the show Mm -hmm. so because it is very consuming and it it can creep up on you and all of a sudden boom it's there full on yeah i like the way that article put it It, it's like an invasion of your entire being your you know invades your your mental health you're sitting you're sitting in the car by yourself and all of a sudden boom a thought hits you yeah they're all of a sudden they're sitting next to you in the car (laughs) you're not alone right right and that's a boundaries issue too because if you allow that person to permeate your fiber of your being without setting that mental boundary right somehow they they infiltrated the enemy came in And so that enemy that came in was, again, set down at cost because if your parents didn't get you, give you boundaries, if they were resentful, if they taught you how to resent, then, uh, then you're blueprinting off of that. And so here we go again. Now you're, now, now you're, you're, you're trained to think like that. You're trained to, uh, process like that. And you know what? If you're experiencing a little resentment and you want to get on the couch with Dr. Judy, this is a call-in show. Please call us. And the number here in Los Angeles is area code 323-843-2826. That's 323-843-2826. Or uh, you can write us at info at drjudywtf.com. And, of course, WTF stands for What the Freud, for those of you that are new. And... Um, there you go. So, so one of my thoughts is that the opposite of resentment is appreciation. Gratitude. Gratitude. Mm-hmm. Appreciation. Yeah. And so if there is somebody out there that you resent, then you might want to appreciate that you don't need to have them in your life. Okay. If that person is so Anymore. toxic to you, so poisonous to you, then... You can do something different with that resentment and set a boundary and just say, you know, that person has already taken enough from me. I'm done. I'm closing the door on that. Unless you want to pursue them legally, unless you want to do something proactive and uh, take back your power, which we're all, you know, th- that's all a free choice kind of thing. If, if it's just pure resentment without... Um, a way to really um, capture your power in a healthy way, then at some point we've got to, we've got to let this thing go, draw the boundary and appreciate that that person is no longer in our lives and learn the lesson and learn that we cannot allow for people like, like that, these vampires that you were describing that zap our energy and invade our mind, body, soul. We can't allow people like that to come into our lives and uh, possess us, so to speak. And so um, we we need to be better um, relationship pickers. Uh, whether that be picking a doctor, picking a uh, hairstylist, or picking a, um, a, a, a you know a, a life partner, we have to be really, really uh, conscious about who we pick into our lives because not everyone will 
bring us light. Not everyone is meant to synergize with. And sometimes we can only synergize with certain people in certain areas. Like if you have a tennis partner, but you don't particularly like the person in other arenas of life. So play tennis with that person. It doesn't mean they have to be your best friend. So that's one way to keep down the resentment is to make sure your picker works. Okay. Uh, make sure that you appreciate Make sure that, what was the other thing you said? Um, gratitude. Right. Gratitude. Gr- attitude of gratitude. An attitude of gratitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. There are ten, 10 steps here that this article also elaborates. I wanted to touch on, and you can expand on them if you'd like to. Approach resentment as the addictive state of mind that it is. Because it kind of be redic- addictive. You just kind of, you know, revel in it and go over and over and over you go. Realize that you are using resentment to re- replicate old dramas and acknowledge that you cannot change the past. Mm-hmm. Examine how your resentment may come from mentally confusing people in your present life with people from your past. And you, again, you talked about what, what for, came the to mind. projection. With, is not only projection, but in terms of like your tennis example, uh, guys are more uh, able to do this, and that's compartmentalize. Okay. You know, hey, this is just my tennis partner. He's mm-hmm. not my best friend, but, you know, right. I enjoy the time we just spend and I need to play tennis and I can't play tennis by myself. Right. And, you know, uh, other than people who are really, really you know what? demeaning we've, you. We've, we've got a call. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Great. Hi, Hi. Thanks for calling. You're on the Hi. air with Dr. Judy and, and Walt. Hi. Hi. So I like this conversation because I deal with a lot of resentment. Okay. And I'm not really sure what I resent more, my mother or my husband. Okay. But I probably would like help with both. Okay, sure. What is your <laughs> name? What is your name, please? It's Kara. Kara? Okay, I'm so glad you called. Is this the first time that you're listening to the show? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's that's wonderful. So let's talk well, about. Well, thanks for tuning in. Yes. Uh, okay. So let's talk about both. Okay. So I like to work backwards. So who's the first person in your life? I'm sorry. Who's the first person? Right. I'm asking a, an obvious question here. Okay. You mentioned your mother. You mentioned your husband. Right. You mentioned both these people. But who came Correct. first? Well, obviously my mother. Right, obviously. So there's your blueprint. So what do you resent about your mother? She is judgmental, and she is uh, conditional, and everything about her, she she has made my life structural based on what she has expected of me, Mm -hmm. and I can never make her happy. Okay. Okay. And little children like to make their mothers happy, obviously. So when a a parent raises the bar to a point of ridiculousness and impossibility, it always leaves the child feeling like a failure. So I wouldn't be surprised if your core belief is something like, I'm not good enough, I'm, I'm a failure, something like that. Okay. Does that somehow resonate to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. 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 So now let's skip to your uh, husband and tell me what you resent about him. Well, he was not truthful from the beginning. Okay. And after nine years, I found out that he was a drug addict. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of abuse verbally, mostly verbally and mentally. Okay. And on my struggle with it was, what am I doing wrong? And there it is, that egocentric position of a child. Also narcissistic that blames you for his stuff. Yeah, yes. But, But your position in this as a child is, it's all my fault, correct? Yes. Okay, so that's a, a child's point of view, and and as you grow out of that, you're going to be able to have a broader lens of perception, because whose responsibility is it to bring the best to their children? Well, mine. Well, as you a as a mother, okay, and and, yeah. and what about him? 
well, he should have some responsibility, but... But? He is a blamer. But I'm sorry? He he blames. And who does he pl- so, blame? Well, me. Right. And, and the thing about a parent blaming a child is that the parent is their source. Do you understand? We look to our parents as... as that's our source. Whatever they say is uh, the end all, the be all, and an e- the end all. Because we know no better than that, right? So if they say that we're wrong or bad or we're to we're at fault, then what are we supposed to do? Question them? Of course, we believe of it, course. right? Of course. Okay. Yes. So there's the blueprint. So that your mother was critical and judgmental, and you can never do it right with her. And how about your husband? Um, are, is there a parallel between the two? I think so. Of course, my mother would not agree. Okay. Because my mother was extremely religious and just she just religious and faithful and of course no drugs, no alcohol, no nothing. Right. And then my husband hid all of his addictions. Was your father an alcoholic? No. No. So there were there were no drugs in your family. So it's interesting you picked somebody who uh, obviously I call it the hole in the soul. Okay. Your husband has a hole in the soul and he patches his hole uh, in the soul up with uh, with 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 drugs, and he hid this from you. And I'm sure in the process you felt abandoned on some level emotionally because he was having an affair with his. Oh, no, well, there, many things, not just drugs. And yeah, there was, yeah. Drugs, oh, there were other alcohol. things. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So emotionally, he must not have been the most available person to you. Not at all. Okay, and does that sound familiar to your mo- uh, to what pattern from your mother too? Was she emotionally available to you? I don't think so. Okay, so you're correct. So, so I want you to just notice that whatever's happening is kind of like a dovetailing of resentment. So your mother put in motion uh, this sense that you were not the most important person in in her world because she was always demanding more and more of you and you can never please her. And then your husband was off having his affair with his alcohol and drugs. And so you weren't important either. So in some sense, you were alone, emotionally alone, okay, which would make you feel very angry and resentful, naturally, correct? Yes. Okay, so what I'm what I'm I say- try not to I try not to feel angry. I try to feel just mm, I think sad is the word or sorry. Okay, so because I do I do feel I do feel proud of myself. Yes, and I feel sorry for them. Okay, I understand. So you're trying to separate this for yourself. You're trying to say they have a problem, and I'm not going to be owning their problem so that I think that's healthy of you to try to separate who you are and who they are does that make sense I I hope so so that's the boundary that I want you to concentrate on that whatever they're doing and whoever they're being ultimately has nothing to do with you but because of your blueprinting from your mother and of course your father you've taken that on in another human being and you've done what i call the wtf which is the name of our show which is the what the freud okay you've repeated (laughs) this pattern and so in order to untangle yourself from this pattern uh you've got to go back to the source of the problem through a process and unravel that source and decode it so that it doesn't live in you and it doesn't live in your core of your being and in your self-esteem. And then you go to one of those nice CODA meetings and you start setting boundaries. Codependency. Thank you. You start going to these meetings, uh, these 12-step meetings, and you start setting boundaries with your husband and you start getting really, really busy with your own life and your friends and nourishing yourself and being around people who really bring light to your life. 
life. Because whenever you're around a narcissist, which is the energy that you're describing your mother to be, it's never good enough. And you're there to please her. And you're kind of like her trophy child. That's not what children are for. Then that causes a whole set of damages. I, I do hope you get my book, Be the Cause Healing Human Disconnect, because it's going to really, really explain a lot. And, you know, we do do teletherapy and we do have sliding scale uh, fee interns, you know, just for you to know, because you can. Dis- I'm very interested. Yeah, please, please contact me uh, via the website, Dr. Judy WTF, and, and we, we will de- definitely create that mind map pathway out of this hell hole, out of this emotional prison. That doesn't mean that you'll never talk to your mother again, by the way, and nor does it mean that you necessarily have to get a divorce, okay? But it does mean that you have to repair the damage that they caused you and then set boundaries uh, uh, with your husband because, because of the damage that your family of origin caused. That's what he's doing in your picture. Do you understand? I do. Okay, so this has to be unraveled, and uh, the CODA meetings will help you to set boundaries with your husband that if he doesn't give you what your needs are, you're going to take your needs elsewhere to friends and uh, volunteer services and your children and, you know, whatever else you do. But do not uh, give too much where you're not receiving too much because that's going to bleed you out, and you are going to be depleted it's, and resentful. It's called okay? vampiring. You're going to be totally drained and vampired right. and of course resentful. Right. Exactly. So please be in touch. Uh, where, what part of the country are you from? I'm in Southern California. Oh, really nice. So we're in Sherman Oaks and Beverly Hills. So contact us. Okay. And thank you so much. Did that kind of give you a, 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 a um, an idea of how this whole thing works and why you're entangled in this mess and feeling this way? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, and you know what? We've got another quick call. Thanks, Car, for calling. Yeah, thank you. Be in touch. Okay. And Thanks appreciate so much. Your call. God bless. Thank you. Oops, lost it. Oh, well. Okay, the maybe they'll call back. They'll call back. Okay, um, great. We've got about five minutes for our song anyway. Okay. So there you go. It all, you know, the she she duplicated her mother with her husband, who's her ex-husband. Yes. So uh, there you go. Right, so the resentment when you go forward into the people that you pick into your life is a blueprint off of the original. It's always the original. And ask yourself if you're resenting the people that you pick into your life, what are they doing in your life? Why are they there in your life? And the answer oftentimes is that you're unconsciously picking similar people to your family of origin. And that's what they're doing. Getting back real quick to the 10 steps, and then we're going to go to our song, Mm -hmm. um, which dovetails right into uh, what we're talking about is um, acknowledge that you cannot control those who've rejected you. Um, And I say, as a healthy way of intervening, reject the rejector. Okay, rather than chase the rejector, Ah. hope the rejector comes back. Reject the rejector. Oh, well, there's no there, there there's no light. There's no goodness coming from a rejector. And we've got another call here. Oh, so. wonderful! And remember, okay. you want to reject the rejector, which means it's narcissistic injury, right? <laughs> you want to reject people who, yeah. who who don't honor you. Hi, you're on the couch with Dr. Judy and Walt. Thanks for calling. Hi. You there? Hi. There we go. Um. Okay. I'm. A, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I can hear barely. You. Okay. Okay. Um, well, let me take off my Bluetooth and I'll just talk into the phone. Is that better? A little bit. Thank you. Hello? Yes. Hello. Hi. What's your Hi. name? Uh, Susan. Hi, Susan. Nice to nice to meet you. Is this your first time listening to the show? Oh, I've seen numerous of your videos okay. on YouTube. Okay. Okay, but so this is the first time I've actually caught the show. Okay, wonderful. We have a handful of minutes, so I uh, want to get right into it. Go ahead and tell me uh, what the issue is that you're calling about. Okay, uh, well, I do recognize that I had a narcissistic mother, mm-hmm. uh, but I do believe that I have forgiven her for 
as much as I possibly can remember, okay. you know, anything that I can remember, and I've accepted the rest. Mm-hmm. The, my problem is I got married a year ago, and I didn't know he was a covert narcissist. A, um, a covert um, narcissist? Two and a half months into okay. our marriage. Yeah. He, uh, um, I'm finding this out now. I, I'm finding all of this. You have found your videos and everything mm-hmm. and um, other sites. And two and a half months into our marriage, he, I found out my brother had cancer. Mm-hmm. And same day, I snapped at him, which was his excuse to get mad and not talk to me and give me silent treatment. He went back to his ex-wife. And my brother passed away in November. Hmm. And I know the anger is getting to me. I don't want it to turn to resentment. I'm just not sure. Am I angry at him? Am I angry at myself? Am I angry at God? Is this all part of grief? I don't know. When did your uh, When did your brother pass away? November. Just this November. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's pretty... Two days after Thanksgiving. Wow, okay. And I was up there. I was... Um, I was five miles away from my husband, and I didn't know he was back with his ex-wife at that time. So and, I, 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 um, mm-hmm. I didn't. Were you close to your brother? And I asked him just to come to give me a hug. Yes, he was the oldest, and I'm the youngest, and he was my hero. Okay. So are you saying that you got angry at your Out husband seven. because you were upset, clearly, because your brother was going through this, and he then turned a cold shoulder just because you got angry at your husband and he rejected you? Well, I my brother was in Connecticut and I live in South Carolina and I was I worked traveling and so I drove 8 hours to spend 4 hours with my brother to drive to to drive 20 hours home. Sure. I'm back to South Carolina. I had to keep my residence, to keep okay. my job. Okay. And my husband was in Ohio with his mother. And um, we were talking on the phone, and he was just, he was telling me something about his friend. And we he knew we were waiting to find out if my brother had stage three or stage four. Sure. Which would decide whether he got treatment or not. Yeah. And so he goes to get off the phone, and I snapped at him, and I said, well, my brother has um, have to have aggressive chemo and radiation just in case you were wondering. And then he started cussing me out and stuff and yelling at me. And so I hung up on him. He sure. called back, cussed me out. And I hung up on him again and I sent him a message and just asked him to leave me alone for a while so I could pray and give it to God. Yeah. And he's like, fine, you aren't left alone. I'll leave you alone. And that's when he went back to his ex wife? Yeah. Well, that's when he started saying, you go your way, I'll go mine. Okay, and so... Then, and yeah. on August 1st, he admitted he had had an affair, but uh-huh. I didn't. And then he said he didn't, and then it's just been one really big mind trip. You know, first he said he did, then he said he didn't, and, and then um, I went past his mother's house in October, and there was a car there that I didn't recognize, and I got the license plate, right, and it ran, away, ran right away, and then... At Thanksgiving, there was a his sister in law was tagged in a picture that the, their family she's on my Facebook and he had deleted me and their family had taken a picture and his ex wife was tagged in it but she wasn't in the I picture. I see, I see. So, so, I so this is really interesting because sometimes under stress, people's character comes out. And I, I've i just recently been going through this myself. A friend of mine has stage four cancer. It was very challenging because I was taking care of him in my home. And it was really, uh, you know, illuminating my character, both good and bad, of course. And so people's character will crack under pressure. The fact that your ex-husband, is he an ex now? Yes. Not yet. I'm trying to get the divorce now. Okay, so and so we just celebrated our first anniversary on April fourth. Okay, I just want to say a few things because I, I, I know we were now. we're out of time shortly, but I want to say that your brother is your hero. He is your angel, and in a big picture, I'm very spiritual, so I tend to look at things like this. That your brother really. Uh, came into your life to illuminate something that didn't belong in your life and the someone that didn't belong in your life and that someone obviously is your soon-to-be ex-husband because when we're in pain and suffering 
and we need support, the people around us have to have some level of tolerance uh, for our, our snapping, okay? We do snap sometimes when we're in pain. It's nice that, that when we snap, we own our own stuff quickly, you know? That's nice. I think you were trying to do that by saying, just leave me alone for a few days while I give it to God. That was a wonderful thing to say. But what he did in retaliation was really withdraw his love and his support and at a time when you really, really needed that. And so I don't know what your blueprint is like. I don't know if you're, you, you said your mother, is, is she that way? Is she a cold? Is she a, not a nurturing person? Or, or was, she, was she somebody that was a nurturing person? mother to you? Well, um, she passed away in, in 2004, okay. but she grew up abused, and to me, she was a narcissist. To my stepdad, she was codependent. She okay. was married seven times. Okay, so... Both of them were wife abused or so. Wow. Okay. So look, this is the blueprint. Unfortunately, I, I see this again and again. I talk about it again and again when we're blueprinted from a narcissistic uh, mother, father. That simply means that they're injured. I'm not saying it's their fault. I'm saying that they're the cause. Okay. There's a big difference. So your mother was injured and her mother and father were injured and this is multi-generational. And when it trickles down to you, then parents set the bar, then you pick a person that treats you on a kind of a, a same kind of a level. I know we have to stop in a minute, but I just wanted you to see the parallel process. And so one of the things I said before you called was leave the lever. So be in appreciation that this person is out of your life. And I, I hope to hear from you, maybe even at the Psychological Healing Center, and, if and you haven't process gotten, this out so that you don't pick a person like this yeah. ever again. And have you okay? gotten Dr. Judy's book, you can go to Amazon and get it, uh, Be the Cause, Healing Human Disconnect. Or off of the website, Dr. Mm -hmm. Judy WTF, you can purchase it there. I, It'll give you a really good understanding. And feel free to call back. I do We're just a little pressed for time doing your therapy over Skype. Uh, my pleasure. Please do okay. call, and, uh, and and I think it's essential that before you get married again, get in a serious relationship, that you do a little emotional cleaning, <laughs> cleaning it out. Took me 20 to... What's that? It took me 23 years between my first marriage and this one. So oh my God! Okay, but again. listen, maybe <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe if you understand that now now that we you have an opportunity to have a better picker, you'll you'll pick them faster, better. How's that? Okay, right. And you know what? Uh, we'll shorten the, we'll shorten that uh, that that uh, distance between the two. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Right. So look, my condolences. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks, Walt, for sure. Uh, my condolences to you about your brother, and my Absolutely. congratulations to you that. This situation illuminated his character and he left so that you can feel free to be the cause of better outcomes for your life. Uh, I talked to Dr. Judy about situations in my life and she's always yeah, saying, I well, do. You, you dodged a bullet. You dodged a bullet. You dodged a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've read some stories and seen some videos of people who've had it for years and years and years and I'm like... Oh, thank you, God, for bringing it to light. I just wish he had brought it to light a little bit so, earlier. It's okay. <laughs> it's here. It's, it's in the light. Yeah. So thank you for calling. And uh, I know we're going to be shrinking our tune on Eminem. And do be in touch, Susan. Appreciate it. Thanks so much call. for calling and being part of our show, Susan. Hope to hear from you soon. Yes. All right. God bless. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Wow. <laughs> We've really hit a nerve here. This is, this is great. We may have to do more of this. But be that as it may, we are going to shrink our tune, which is called Cleaning Out My Closet, interestingly enough, and it's by Eminem. Have you ever been hated or discriminated against? I have. I've been protested and demonstrated against. Pick, picket signs of my wicked rhymes. Look at the times. Sick, sick as the mind of the uh, MFing kid that's behind. All this commotion, emotions run deep, and oceans exploding. So I guess this person is uh, cleaning out his resentment closet, isn't he? Well, he's yes. been hated and discriminated against, and uh, uh, yeah, um, and, and emotions about it are running deep, and he's aware that they're about to explode. Temples, t 
tempers flaring from parents just blowing off and keeping going. Not taking nothing from no one. Give them hell long as I'm breathing. Keep kicking ass in the morning and taking names in the evening. Leave them with a taste of as sour as vinegar in their mouth. See, they can trigger me, but they'll never figure me out. Look at me now. I'll bet you're probably sick of me now, aren't you, Mama? I'm, I'm going to make you look so ridiculous now. Well, it looks like he's really angry and pretty revengeful. He wants to show his mother up and because of all the hell uh, that he's gone through, tempers flaring from parents. So uh, his blueprint doesn't sound too good, does it, Walt? No, it certainly doesn't. I'm sorry, Mama. I never meant to hurt you. I never meant to make you cry. But tonight, I'm cleaning out my closet one more time. I said, I'm sorry, Mama. I never meant to hurt you. I never meant to make you cry. But tonight, I'm cleaning out my closet. So he's choosing himself over his mother, which is a healthy thing yes, to do. It sure is. Because if Mama is so emotionally injurious to him, he's got to he's got to clean out and set those boundaries. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Got to do those boundaries. Ha, I've got some skeletons in my closet. I don't know if no one knows it. So before they throw me inside my coffin and close it, I'm going to expose it. I'll take you back to 1973 before I even had a multiple platinum selling CD. I was a baby. Maybe I was just a couple of months. So he's acknowledging that there, there was a time when he was innocent and now things have built up and, you know, things are not so good and they're so before they throw me inside my coffin sounds to me like that double dungeon of darkness that i talk about (laughs) where there's no emotional escape (laughs) right there's the coffin yeah here comes dad my father (laughs) must have been must had his panties up in a bunch because he spit he split i wonder if he ever kissed me goodbye no i don't on second thought i just wished he would die I look at Haley, and I can, can picture her leaving my side. Even if I hated Kim, I, I grit my teeth, and I try to make it work with her, at least for Haley's sake. Sounds like a father that uh, took off, left the kids, yep, and very early, he doesn't want to hurt his siblings. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, he's, you know, the person, this this person had really. Um, the, the panel one of the mother of the source and the panel two, which is the outside world, both of them were pretty messed up. And so he's just gritting his teeth now and full of resentment. Yes, indeed. I made, I maybe made some mistakes. You okay. think maybe? But I'm only human and I'm man enough to face them today. What I did was stupid. No doubt it was dumb. But I'm, But the smartest thing I did was take the bullets out of that gun. Because I'd kill him. I would have shot Kim and him both. It's my life. I'd like to welcome y'all to the Emin Show. The Eminem Show. Eminem Show. Wow. Excuse me. So he is really, really angry, but to the point where he wants to kill, but he's not going to be that stupid. So this is a very long song. It's isn't a long song. It? We've got the okay. chorus, and then we're going to go now. I would never diss my own mama just to get recognition. Take a second to listen for who you think this record is dissing. But put yourself in my position. Just try to envision witnessing your mama popping prescription pills in the kitchen, bitching at someone's always going through her purse and stuff's missing, going through the public housing system, victim of Muhausen syndrome. Munchausen syndrome, which is a, a syndrome where... Uh, they use their children t- as uh, uh, make them make them sick so they could go to the hospital and take oh. advantage of Yikes. a medical. Um, so this person obviously has such a horrendous uh, family of origin: mm-hmm. mother, father. The mother's on pills and she's paranoid. He has a lot to be resentful about. Okay, so he's yeah. Well, here it is. My whole life, I was made to believe I was sick when I wasn't. Till I grew up, now I blew up. It makes me you sick to your stomach, doesn't it? Wasn't it the reason you made that CD for me, Ma? So you could just try and justify the way you treated me, Ma? But guess what? You're getting older, and now it's cold when you're lonely. But, uh, and Nathan's growing up so quick, he's going to know that you're a phony. And Hallie's getting so big now, you should see her. She's beautiful. Right, so the mother used him, Mm -hmm. and she used him to uh, uh, gain favor her for for herself, and so now he is 
seeing who she is, and that's part of his ability to see through a non 